Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I see some people still trickling in, which is good, but I think we should go ahead and get started. My name is Callie. I'll be facilitating this session. Um, welcome to Digital Scriptorium, building an LOD platform for a national union catalog for pre-modern manuscripts in US collections. Um, I know many of you have maybe seen this slide before and I'll drop the links into the chat um, as I stop sharing my screen, but just some links to the conference website, code of conduct, our Twitter handle and hashtag. There's a Slack invite link here, as well as some information on how to get tech support in the Slack channel. And also a short link to the YouTube videos on uh, the LD4 YouTube um, site. Uh, this session is being uh, recorded and live streamed, just so you know. Um, and we are joined by Lynn Ransom. Um, I'm just going to introduce Lynn and then uh, stop sharing my screen and we can get underway here. Lynn Ransom is the curator of manuscripts at the Schoenberg Institute for Manuscript Studies at Penn Libraries, where she oversees the Schoenberg database of manuscripts and is co-editor of the Schoenberg Institute's journal, Manuscript Studies. She is currently serving as the president and executive director of Digital Scriptorium, and in that capacity is overseeing the project she is sharing today to create an LOD-based online catalog of pre-modern manuscripts in U.S. collections. Thanks so much, Lynn. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. All right, thank you. I'll start sharing mine. Can everyone see the... Okay, good, great. All right, well, uh, thank you, um, Callie, for the kind introduction. Um, and thanks to the, uh, it's situated here, to the LD4 Organizing Committee for allowing me to present a quick overview of a linked data project that we at the Schoenberg Institute for Manuscript Studies have been working on um, the cap for the past couple of years on behalf of Digital Scriptorium. So Digital Scriptorium is a consortium of American libraries and museums committed to free online access to their collections of pre-modern manuscripts. Since it began in 1997, Digital Scriptorium's primary work has been to maintain a database that unites collections of pre-modern manuscripts from institutions across the US and an open platform for teaching and scholarly research. The database now contains over 8,000 manuscripts and 34 collections. Until recently, <clears throat> the technical platform for Digital Scriptorium, or DS for short, was hosted and managed by UC Berkeley. This platform depended on WebGenDB to store the data and outputted it using the meta metadata encoding and transmission standard, or METS, format. However, in 2017, <clears throat> Berkeley let us know that they could no longer support WebGenDB um, after 2020, which pushed the Digital Scriptorium Board of Directors to begin thinking about redeveloping its technical platform. Berkeley's move away from the WebGenDB was the catalyst for redevelopment, but other contributing factors were no less pressing. Most importantly, the data model that was designed in 1997, while innovative at the time, is very much out of date with more current technologies and cataloging practices. These technologies and practices have allowed institutions to create their own digital catalogs and mark or using TEI or in a number of other formats that exi exist separately from the DS record. Thus the work burden of creating and maintaining two digital records for every manuscript in a collection created a major barrier for participation for institutions, keeping them uh, from updating records originally contributed to the DS catalog. Consequently, much of the current DS data is well out of date. Yet the need for a, union, a national union catalog remains and our challenge over the last few years has been to figure out how to make it less difficult for members to participate in Digital Scriptorium and build a barrier reduced technical platform that is sustainable both technologically and financially, as well as in terms of workflow on both ends, the DS end and the institution's end. In order to achieve these goals, building a DS 2.0 with linked open data technologies became the obvious way to go. So I'm here today to give you a brief overview of our, of our processes and decision-making that has gotten us to where we are now, which is in a prototype testing phase with a planned beta launch this fall. In August, 2020, we received an IMLS planning grant uh, in the National uh, Leadership Grants for Libraries program. 
and this grant funded a year dedicated to designing and modeling a new platform. But before we started the actual modeling, we took some time to determine a list of principles that would guide our decision making uh, as we design the new model. In the first place, we determined that as a national union catalog, the primary function would be to help people find manuscripts, not to be a research tool or a descriptive catalog attempting to provide users with all the information about a manuscript, a function that we felt could be better served by the home institution's record. This meant that we could drastically minimize the standards of data entry to the point that we all we needed to know was that an institution had a manuscript. <clears throat> For institutions that do not have in-house uh, subject expertise, this means that even if you know nothing about a manuscript in your collection, you can still make it accessible to a community of librarians, curators, and scholars with the necessary expertise, <coughs> excuse me, who can then help your institution build a better metadata profile. We also determined that enriching member data through reconciliation with external and internal authorities would offer the highest value to members participating in Digital Scriptorium. These authorities include in-house manuscript ID, um, author an authority that will create a permanent identifier for every manuscript object in the US, and an internal name authority that will allow us to create records for people associated with the production and trade of manuscripts that are not represented in existing authorities. In my mind, the manuscript ID is the key to linking our members' manuscript data to larger data, to a larger data ecosystem, and to building our sustainability plan by offering a permanent linked open data presence of each manuscript in Digital Scriptorium, if it were to go away. Digital, digital Scriptorium, that is. I'll speak more about the manuscript ID shortly. By defining our principles, um, we were able to draft uh, our vision of what DS 2.0 would look like. In short, members would provide us with structured data in any format available. We would transform that data into linked open data and then make that data available to the world. Once we understood what we wanted to do, we then determined the tools we would use to make that vision a reality. For our purposes, Wikibase offered a ready-made toolbox that could serve as a platform for contribution to Wikidata. Based on this vision, we developed and have implemented a workflow that allows us to deliver impactful services to our members. For this lightning talk, I don't have time to detail our process for transforming member data, but for further information, I can point you to our GitHub site where my colleagues LP Coladangelo and Doug Emery have collected documentation and scripts for transforming the data from the member sources for ingest into the DS wiki base. I think these like links are being posted into the chat now. Um, and there's also among these links, a video presentation that details the process. I'd like to spend the rest of my time showing a sneak peek of the prototype, starting with the underlying data model as a roadmap for navigating the wiki base. The data model consists of classes and properties uh, that are consistent with wiki base. The colored rectangles correspond to classes of items and the two green rectangles in the center are the main manuscript items, the manuscript record, which corresponds to the physical manuscript item, and the DS 2.0 record, which contains the metadata about the manuscript. The blue rectangles indicate resources and external authority files, including Wikidata for names, the art and architecture thesaurus for materials, the thesaurus of geographic names for places, and AAT uh, and or FAST for genre and subject terms. What I think is notable about our model is the distinction between the manuscript record denoting the physical object and the DS 2.0 record holding the metadata for that object. The only data associated with the manuscript record is the DS ID, which is then linked to, though not dependent on, the metadata in the DS 2.0 record. So as the metadata changes, as pre-modern manuscript metadata will do as the scholarly uh, record develops, the DSID remains stable. Similarly, the holding class, which is in the upper right corner, provides DS uh, member institution, provides DS member institutions data associated with the manuscript. In the rare case that a manuscript would be moved from one institution to another, a new holding instance would be created for the new holding for the 
for the new institution, and the old one would be marked as non-current. <clears throat> but the DSID will remain the same, allowing the metadata linked to the DSID to follow the physical object as it changes location and also captures any history of movement. The DSID is what is also uh, will also be contributed to Wikidata, along with enough metadata for disambiguation purposes, so like author, title, place of location, and date. As we all know, contribution to Wikidata will expand discovery of our members' data beyond the digital script room domain, and will present an opportunity for anyone to contribute more knowledge about the manuscript that member institutions can then use to enhance the original source record. As I mentioned earlier, we are currently in the prototype testing phase. For this phase, we have taken a sampling of, a, of data, about a thousand records from different institutions using different encoding methods. And we're so far pretty happy with the results. I'm showing you here the first 16 of those records. Um, and just to say that we will be developing a user-friendly interface uh, in the coming months. So it won't look like this when we open it to the public. Within this list of items, you can see the main nodes of the data model that I mapped out earlier. The first item here, uh, number one, is the DS record, which includes a descriptive metadata about the manuscript recorded here, a statement. And you can see within those statements are links to external authorities. In this case, the link in the author statement takes you to the DS name authority record which contains a reciprocal link to the Wikidata entry for this author, thus providing a much richer, bi much richer biographical information and data context. Continuing with the other two items associated with the manuscript, a statement in the DS 2.0 record links to the manuscript record with the DSID, which in turn shows a link to the holding record. So thanks to the network of links, both internal and external, we have built a robust discovery platform from pre-modern manuscripts and US collections that will be linked to Wikidata, the world's largest publicly accessible knowledge graph. The DS 2.0 platform is relatively inexpensive to maintain and from a technical point of view, easily sustainable as part of the community maintained Wikimedia stack of open source tools that are available to everyone. Without the burden of having to maintain a technical infrastructure on our own, we can now concentrate our efforts on gathering data and growing membership. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge and thank everyone on the project team who much more than myself deserve the credit for getting uh, DS 2.0 to this point. We're now, as I said, preparing to large, launch a public beta version later this fall. And we hope that you'll continue to follow us as we move into the next stage. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lynn. It looks like we have a minute or two. If anyone has any questions, um, maybe we can try to answer one or two uh, from the chat or from the Q&A. I think there's one question in the Q&A. Yeah, it looks like it says, well, I'm excited about the developments in DS. I'm sad that the old site is no longer accessible until the new site is ready. <laughs> yeah, we have we have collected the, the data. So we, you know, we have that available. And we also have PDFs of the old records. It's just not, there's no searchable functionality for the old, uh, old site. How do we solicit participants to Digital Scriptorium? Um, we contact collections directly uh, when, when we have the opportunity. Right now, we're not, um, while we would accept new members, we're uh, sort of holding off on pushing for new membership until we get the beta up and launched at least um, so that we have something to show members. But if you're interested, if anyone's interested in membership, please don't hesitate to contact me. 
Thank you for that question. And it looks like we had one question in the chat about moving data from an earlier system. Did you move your data from the earlier system? No, we took it out. We took the METS data out and we are uh, archiving that. We'll be putting it on our Zenodo in our Zenodo repository um, along with uh, the PDF copies that I mentioned earlier. And we are, for some institutions um, who don't otherwise have an institutional record, we're crosswalking cross the METS data into uh, this, that agnostic spreadsheet that I showed in the slide. And that will be, we'll be using that data to populate that institution's digital scriptorium record. Okay. Well, great. Thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you all for attending. Please find us on Slack and the YouTube channel, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again. Thank you, everybody.